So an, an astrolabe is relatively unknown uh, in today's world, but at the time, in the 13th century, it was the gadget of the day. It was the world's first popular computer, and it was a device that, is, in fact, is a model of the sky. So the different parts of the astrolabe in this particular type, the reet corresponds to the position of the stars, the plate corresponds to a, a coordinate system, and the mater has some scales and puts it all together. If you were an educated child, you would know how to not only use the astrolabe, you would also know how to make an astrolabe. And we know this because the first treatise on the astrolabe, the first technical manual in the English language, was written by Geoffrey Chaucer. Yes, that Geoffrey Chaucer in 1391 to his little Lewis, his 11-year-old son. And in this um, book, uh, little Lewis would, uh, would know the big idea. And the central idea that makes this computer work is this thing called stereographic projection. And basically the, the concept is how do you represent the three-dimensional image of the night sky that surrounds us onto a flat, portable, two-dimensional surface. The idea is actually relatively simple. Imagine that the Earth is at the center of the universe, and surrounding it is the sky projected onto a sphere. Each point on the surface of the sphere is mapped through the bottom pole onto a flat surface where it's then recorded. So the North Star corresponds to the um, center of the device. The ecliptic, which is the path of the sun, moon, and planets, correspond to an offset circle. The bright stars correspond to little daggers on the reet, and the altitude corresponds to the plate system. Now, the real genius of the astrolabe is not just the projection. The real genius is that it brings together two coordinate systems so they fit perfectly. There's the position of the sun, moon, and planets on the movable reet, and then there's their location on the sky as seen from a certain latitude on the back plate. 